Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the third type of numerical based on the chapter of the groundwater. So let's start. Now the first of the problem, it says that in a certain alluvial basin of 100 square kilometer area, 90 cubic millimeter of the groundwater was pumped in a year. And because of that, the groundwater table that has dropped down by 5 meters during the entire year. We have assumed that there is no replenishment, that means no recharge of the groundwater. Based on this assumption, estimate the specific yield of the aquifer. Another information is given that if the specific retention is 12%, what is the porosity of the soil? So, if we look at the aerial extent of the basin, that is 100 square kilometer. Now, out of this, the volume of the water that was taken out, that is 90 cubic millimeter. It is not cubic millimeter, it is 90 million cubic meter. So this much amount of the water was taken out during the particular year. Because of which this, if let's like say this was the groundwater table, then it has dropped down by 5 meter during the year. That means this was the volume of the medium which was drained because in the groundwater it is not possible that you are having only the water. The water is present within the voids of the medium. So the height of the water table when it has dropped by 5 meter that means corresponding to the medium the level has fallen about by about 5 meter. That means this will be the total volume which is being drained out. So we have seen that the specific yield is the volume of the water which is taken out. So the volume of water which is pumped out divided by the total volume of the total volume of the medium from which this was taken out. So the volume of the water which was pumped out that is 90 million cubic meter. So that will be 90 into 10 raised to the power 6 cubic meter divided by the total volume of the aquifer that is 100 square kilometer. So converting it into meter. So into 10 raised to the power 6 square meter into the 5 meter depth. So from here, this 10 raised to the power 6 will be cancelled out. So specific yield is 0.18 and we can also represent it within the percentage. That is the specific yield of the soil is 18%. Now one more data is given that is corresponding to the specific retention. That means against the gravity that means against the gravity what amount of the total medium was able to restrain against the flow so that volume is given as that value is given as 12 percent so if we club both the values that the specific yield that is 18 percent and the specific retention that is 12 percent so if we take the entire volume, so let's say these are the medium particles which are arranged randomly. Now within the voids only the water is present. Now either the water will be taken out or will not be taken out. The amount which is taken out that is given by specific yield and the amount which is retained 
that is given by specific retention. But if we add up both these values, that is giving us the volume of the voids that for the total medium in how much volume the voids are present and therefore that volume of voids are represented by the porosity of the medium. So the porosity of the soil that is given by eta that is, is equal to the SR that is the specific retention plus specific yield. So that will be 12% plus 18%. So the porosity of the soil that is 30%. So that is the first problem that was discussed to calculate the porosity of the soil. The next problem is it says that a 30 centimeter diameter well it penetrates 25 meter below the static water table. Again the steady conditions are given that means they are corresponding to the themes equation. After 24 hours of pumping which is done at the rate of 5400 liters per minute the water level in the test well at 90 meter depth was lowered by at 90 meter distance was lowered by 0.53 meter and in a well which is 30 meter away the drawdown was 1.11 meter. Now here we have to calculate another factor that is known as the transmissibility of the aquifer which is the coefficient of permeability into the width of the aquifer. In the second part, we have to determine the drawdown in the main well. Now, this problem has been asked in the engineering services exam. So, let's solve it. Now, since the well is penetrating 25 meter below the static water table, it is evident that it is the case of the unconfined aquifer. Because if this wasn't, then the water, this well could have not gone up to such depth. So the themes equation for the discharge will be applied and that is given as Q is equal to pi k into h2 square minus h1 square divided by 2.303 log base 10 R2 upon R1. Now one by one we will calculate all the data. So corresponding to the second drawdown. So if we look at the themes equation. This is the main pumping well. Now corresponding to this if water table has fallen down from this to this existing level. So this will be the drawdown influence. At one location which is 30 meter away, the drawdown is 1.11 meter. At another location, this is 0.53 meter. Now this is at a distance of 30 meter and this is at a distance of 90 meter. So we are considering this as the first one and this is as the second one. So for first well, the drawdown that is given by S1 that is, is equal to 1.11 meter. Therefore, the value of the height of well that is H1 that is D minus S1. Total depth that was 25 minus 1.11. This will be equal to 23.89 meter. Corresponding to first one, the radius is 30 meter. Now for the second well, the drawdown that was given as 0.53 meter. Therefore, H2 will be equal to D minus S2. That is 25 minus 0.53. 
that is 24.47 meter corresponding to this the r2 value is 90 meter now this is the entire values that has been given now for both the cases this pumping rate that was as 5400 liters per minute now since q value is given as 5400 liters per minute converting it into the standard unit that is 54 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 cubic meter divided by 60 seconds so from here this will be 0 0.09 cubic meter per second this will be the value of the discharge now substituting these values in the given equation by the theme so placing the value of the q that is 0 0.09 that is is equal to pi into k into for the first case this is 24.47 square that is h2 square minus h1 square divided by this will be 2.303 log base 10 r2 is 90 divided by r1 is 30 so from this if we calculate the value of the coefficient of permeability that is 0 0.09 into 2.303 into log base 10 90 upon 30 that is 3 divided by this value is 3.14 into 24.47 that is a square minus b square from here if we calculate the value of this coefficient of permeability that comes out to be 1.121 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 in the units of meter per second that is the coefficient of permeability now therefore the transmissibility that is given by capital T which is is equal to k into b or that is written as k into d that is the width of the aquifer so here we are representing that value by the depth so this coefficient of permeability that is 1.121 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 in meter per second the value of d that is 25 so the units of the transmissibility will be square meter per second so from here the answer that we are getting that is is equal to 0 0.028 square meter per second now to have this value as the significant one we can convert this into the minutes so this will be is equal to 1.68 square meter per minute so this is the result corresponding to the transmissibility of the aquifer that completes the first part of the problem now in the next part we have to calculate the drawdown in the main well so now we want to calculate the drawdown in the main well so to calculate this we will again use the same formula that is done for the unconfined aquifer that is pi into k into h2 square minus h1 square divided by 2.303 log base 10 r2 upon r1 here what we will do in place of h2 we will use the h1 and in place of h1 we will use the hw because what we are doing now we want to calculate this drawdown level that is for the main well so that is given as sw and the remaining height will be hw 
corresponding to the first observation well that is s1 and remaining one is h1 we will take these two data points only so in place of h2 we will use now h1 and corresponding to h1 we will use hw so corresponding to r2 this will be r1 and corresponding to r1 this will be the radius of the well so since the discharge rate remains the same so that is 0 0.09 cubic meter per second this pi value that remains the same into this coefficient of permeability that is 1.121 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 h2 square now here this is h1 square so first of all i'll write down the changed formula that is h1 square minus hw square divided by 2.303 log base 10 r1 upon rw so h1 square so that will be equal to 23.89 square minus hw that we do not know divided by 2.303 log base 10 r1 is 30 meter while the radius of the well that is given to us so the diameter of the well that was given to us as 30 centimeter this diameter was given as the first data point so this value is 30 centimeter so the radius will be 15 centimeter so converting that into meter this will be 0.15 meter radius of the well that was 15 centimeter converting that into meter is 0.15 now from here we want to calculate the value of the hw so after simplifying this equation for the hw that is the height of the main well that comes out to be 12.08 meter therefore draw down in the main well draw down in the main well that is given by sw will be is equal to d minus hw this d is 25 meter minus hw is 12.08 so from here this sw is, is equal to 12.92 meter that is the drawdown in the main well so corresponding to this drawdown we will be getting the radius of the influence and correspondingly we will be having the zone of influence now that completes all the type of problems based on the chapter of the groundwater. In the next video, we will start the new chapter that is based on the reservoir plan. Thank you.